It's been another 10 days and the profile of my ginger pot is starting to look impressive. If you look at the original shoot, the sole surviving shoot of 2013, uh, last year, Sully's um, first shoot is all yellowing at the leaf edges. The last leaf tip here that I'm touching is dead and brown. So this has nothing to do with the light intensity of the LED bulbs overhead because this shoot is the most lowest lying. It's uh, drooping parallel to the ground almost and it receives far less light than the other shoots. So this just had the unfortunate timing of being birthed when fungus gnats were destroying everything in 2013. But if you look at this leaf here uh, above, last time I mentioned that it received over 20,000 lux. So that's not yellowing. I mean the tip is, but if I look at all, almost all the established leaves, they do that. And I think that's just a function of the San Diego atmosphere being too dry. You know, humidity can sometimes dip down into the single digits. And it can uh, of around 30 or 40 percent most of the time. So this leaf currently receives 22,500 lux because it's uh, close proximity in this positioning. But it's not yellowing. And that yellowing was a, uh, you know, damage that basically came out of the womb, you know, so to speak. It was already in the works. So this new shoot is very tall, and it looks very healthy. It's vertically as tall as anything else. Uh, there's another shoot from Sully. Sully's doing very well. It's uh, far more advanced than Big Bertha and Drake, which just spawned. So here's an overhead view, and. You know, those two shoots that I just pointed out shoot straight up almost. Well, not really the one in the back, but... So if you look at the bases of Sully's pseudostems, you can see redness. So the bottom leaf wrapping around these pseudostems is red. It's just something that slowly pushed up and expressed itself over time. And I think that's a symptom of moderate healthy development. And there's a bustling patch of activity over here underneath. You can see the ground bulging up in various places. This all reminds me of Big Bertha in 2013 last year. So even this uh, biggest shoot of Soli has a, a little bit of redness at the base. So they're pushing away chunks of plaster as I described in the last update. And even though it's kind of unsightly and somewhat annoying, it doesn't really seem to inhibit uh, new shoots from busting out of the ground. So not really a problem. Also, I haven't had fungus gnats for months, so I don't need to worry about having every square millimeter of land completely fortified. So at the 6 o'clock position, there's a new development. Big Bertha has a second shoot coming up, and it's pushed um, a few chunks of diatomaceous earth out of the way. The diatomaceous earth after being exposed to water it just ends up like this but apparently it's not a problem so this new shoot is very light green in color and it'll probably grow a lot faster and be healthier than this first shoot of Big Bertha the first shoot had problems unfurling its leaves and I had to manually help it along but look how dark green that you know second leaf is and this third leaf was trapped in the second leaf for so long the tip started dying. That happens if leaves and shoots in general don't develop fast enough. The tips start dying because they're trapped. So there's some kind of signaling going on. If it doesn't get direct exposure to light and soon enough, then everything starts dying and the plant will keep on trying over and over again. And maybe that's what's going on here. And I'm all too familiar with these scenarios from winter of the first year. So for this shoot of Drake, it had a similar problem for this second leaf, which is also very dark and you know well developed except for that very tip there. But the rest of it is straight enough. I think this third leaf and beyond will have no problems.